Isaiah 40, verse 1 to 2. Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sins have been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So friends, in these two verses, we could see the kindness of the Lord. We could see the gentleness or the tender mercies of God. But also we could see that He is stern, that He is firm, He is uncompromising. And so friends, too, we have already discussed the kindness and sternness of God. We, told, we were told that God is indeed kind, and yet He is also stern, He is strict. And the reason for the command not to comfort peop, uh, God's people is because they were now in exile. They were now in Babylon, in exile, because they have chosen to harden their hearts. They have chosen to go against the will of the Lord. So here comes now the people being, being tortured, of course, uh, in the land of slavery or in exile. And so the Lord is now commanding us commanding God's people, commanding God's prophets to say to Jerusalem, call for ye, call for ye. And so friends, many times we, are, we find ourselves in that situation where we need to be comforted, where we are suffering so much because of sin. Remember that they were suffering because of their disobedience to the Lord. It is because of their stubbornness, it is because of their rebellion that they were in exile. And yet God is compassionate. God is kind. So that even in the midst of their suffering, God did not abandon them. In fact, he sent messengers to bring that word of comfort. But he said to the messengers, even as you bring comfort to them, be gentle. Amen. He speak to them tenderly. Be gentle towards them. They are already suffering. They are now reaping the, the fruit of their stubbornness. They have suffered enough. And so he said, go, comfort them. But even as you go, then be gentle towards them. That's why he said that, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service had been completed. They have suffered enough, and now they are about to be restored back to the land. Now they are about to be restored back before the Lord. And so he said that, yes, go, comfort, comfort, it's one of them. And this also depicts, friends, the kindness and the gentleness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember when he was, uh, he was uh, uh, rebuking the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because of their stubbornness, because of their hypocrisy, he would, he would go to them and say that, Woe to you, Pharisees! Woe to you, Sadducees! Woe to you, teachers of the law! Say so that you are able to bring one into the kingdom, and yet you will make them even worse because you are not doing actually what you are preaching. You are not doing what you are saying. So, Jesus was stern towards those who have hardened their hearts. But turning around in Matthew 23, verse 37, Matthew 23, verse 37, turning around after rebuking the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stones those who sent to you, those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, friends, suddenly he changed. Suddenly he looked at Jerusalem and said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, so tenderly, 
asking Jerusalem to come, so that as the hand gather her cheeks under her wings. That's how I want to do to you. See, friends, the Lord wants us to cover us. He wants to gather us. He wants to shield and protect us from all harms. But how often do we want to be under her wings? How often do we want to be outside of her wings and be exposed to all kinds of dangers? And yet when we are already exposed, that we turn and say, God, where are you? Is it God's fault? Friends, God is gentle. The Lord is gentle. The Lord is kind. He knows that we are weak. He knows that we are just flesh and blood, subject to all kinds of, of uh, trials, all kinds of temptations, all kinds of difficulties. But let us not harden our hearts. Amen. Let us not harden our hearts. You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, maybe later on, they look back and they said that we should have listened to him. Because towards only the end that they realized, friends, that what Jesus had been telling them should be the one that they should live. See, they should not be living as hypocrites. You know why? Because they know a lot. That's why Jesus told his disciples, do what they say, but they don't do what they do. See, meaning what they were saying is completely different from what they were doing. What they were saying was right. But what they were doing, well, it was not right. That's why he said, that do what they say, but don't do what they were doing. So friends, again, God has a way of ministering to us. Amen. In fact, uh, even in Matthew, you know, uh, when, we re when we read Matthew 11, 28 to 29, where Jesus said, that, Come unto me, you who are weary and heavily laden, and I give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am gentle. So he was saying that I am gentle. He is loving. He is kind. That's why, friends, again, when we come to him, he will show us the way if we submit to him. But if we come to him with a hardened heart, he will rebuke us. He will take every opportunity, friends, to correct us. He won't let things pass without him correcting us. And that is our God. Why? Because he cares. He cares about us. In Matthew 21, you know, you know if you imagine Jesus, a gentle, you know, look at the picture of Jesus. So, he, so gentle looking. Where did they get all those ideas? Reading the scripture. Amen. But you know, many times, many don't believe that Jesus would do what he would do. The way that we do it. That we would be stern, that we would be strict. Many believe that Jesus will still let things pass. It's okay. It's fine. Friends, no. No. Jesus won't deal with sin like that. Jesus will not deal with the hardness of, of the heart like that. If it is wrong, it is wrong to him. He will come with his rebuke. Just, just what he did to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. Remember, friends, that he was only 30 years old then. He died at 33. Here comes the young Jesus. You know, look at Jesus many times. You look at him as if he was an old man. No, he was young. He, has, he started this ministry at 30 years old. He died at 33. And he would come and would rebuke the Pharisees and the Sadducees, for they were not doing what the word was saying to them. And maybe that's why they resented him. Maybe that's why they wanted to kill him. Rather than to listen to him, they would like to kill him. And indeed, they killed him. Because he was preaching the truth, the truth that should set them free. So even as the Lord welcomed the people to say that, come unto me, you who are weary and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord one time went to the temple, see, is this the gentle Jesus that you, you want to see? 
See, he rebukes. And here comes Jesus now, going to the temple after saying that, Oh, you who are weary and heavily laden, come to me. I am gentle, I am meek, I am lowly in heart. Come to me. Then here comes the Lord Jesus going now to the temple. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And then he said in verse 13, It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So he was saying here that, you know, you came. You came here to, de to defile the temple. He said, you are robbing the temple of its glory. You are the te robbing the temple of its uh, the holiness. So you selling and, and, and buying there. You are robbing the people of their attention, focus. You are making my house into a den of robbers rather than into a house of prayer. See the Lord Jesus Christ. He turned over the tables. He drove the money changers gentle and meek. Is that the Jesus that you know? A gentle and meek? But he is the Jesus that I know. A gentle and meek when it comes to people that would come to him with humble heart. Those who would seek him. Those who would plead for grace and mercy. He is so gentle. He is so meek. He is so kind. But to the stubborn, he is stern. So friends, this is the Lord Jesus Christ that we are serving. And so we have to be, he said that, you know, bring comfort to my people. They are already suffering and they have suffered enough. Bring comfort, but in so doing, be gentle. In so doing, be gentle. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, we are told, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And then verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So he's saying that rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. And then let your gentleness be evident to all. So friends, how can we comfort the people that is suffering? How can we comfort the people that, that is in exile? Friends, he said that he speak tenderly. What could be more tender, friends, than singing? What could be a better way to comfort them than to bring dances before them? That's why we are told, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Let your gentleness be evident to all. That's why we have the Israel rejoicing. If we don't appreciate this Israel rejoicing, this is what we are doing here. Because we are commanded, friends, to be gentle to his people. We don't go to them and say, you know what? And start preaching on them. Telling them, convict them of their sin again. He said that they already realize because now they are suffering. Today, he said that you just comfort them, speak tenderly to them. And so we bring the songs, we bring the, the dances to them. And he said that, let your gentleness be evident to all. So not only those that were suffering, not only that were the, those that were exiled, but to everyone. That's why we do it in the park. Evident to all, seen by all. And so friends, that is what we are doing today. Amen. We bring comfort to God's people through our songs and through our dances. See, the Lord is compassionate. He did not allow them to go through sufferings forever and ever. Because God's compassion knows a limit of what we can do. So that after we have reached that point, friends, then he turns it around for as long as we are uh, were in tune with him. That's why in Psalm 30, 
Psalm 30, verse 5, We are told here, for his anger lasts only a, a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. So friends, there is a reason for us to rejoice. See, rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Even if you're suffering, even if you are going through difficult times, even when life itself is threatened, you are sick. The doctor says that you only live 30 days. Rejoice. If you don't rejoice, who will suffer? You. you would you go down to the, to the grave mourning, lamenting? Why wouldn't you just choose to go down to the grave rejoicing? Amen. And who knows, God may have compassion on you and heal you. Who knows, God may have compassion on you when you are going through those difficult times and deliver you because you just rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. But how about lamenting? How about, how about uh, uh, getting mad at God? Getting mad at his messengers? How many messengers had been killed by the people? That's why Jesus was saying that you killed the prophets. You killed God's servants that had declared to you, that had proclaimed to you the truth. And how many are suffering today? Even pastors, preachers are suffering today because they preach the truth. And those who were hurt hated them. Should we be on the side of those who hate them? Or should we be on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ that would just bless those that God had chosen to be our messengers? Amen. Children, your parents are God's messengers. They come to you very strict. Very strict, your parents. But they are God's messengers for your good. Who else will call your attention but your dad and your mom that knows what is good for you? You might think that it's not good. You might fight against them. You might rebel against them, children. But let me tell you this. One day in the future, look back and you will thank your dad. You will thank your mom for what they have done. Read a, a, a ton, hundred, thousands of stories you can read about these things. It's only when they get to a point where they are now in a position of a responsibility and their dads are gone, moms are gone, that they look back and would thank their mommy and their daddy. And yet when mommy and daddy are, were still alive, no, thank you. No, thank you. Why? Because they had not seen, they had not seen the grace of God in the mommy and in the daddy that took a stand and said, no is no. See, sin is sin. Daddy would many times say that, no, it's not right. And you children, listen and obey. Amen. Listen and obey. Will you lose your life by listening to them? Will you, will, will you uh, lose a lot by just listening to them? No. In fact, by listening to them, you will have a lot of favor. Because if you listen to them, then you go, go to your dad and to your mom, and they will favor you with what you're asking. But choose to be a rebel. Choose to be a rebel. Choose to be a disobedient child. Will you get something out of them? I know of someone who said, my children will never get not even a cent of what I own when I die. Nobody among them. I would rather give it to the dogs. I would rather feed it to feed some people than to give it to my children. You know why? They rebelled. They rebelled. And so I said, that, no, why should I give it to them? I give it to charity. And a lot of these things are happening. You know why? Because children don't appreciate the love of the father and of the mother. In the same way, friends, that we don't appreciate the love of God to us until we are in a situation. But friends, remember this, 
God is kind. If we only take that step of coming back to Him, if we only take that step of repenting of our sins, He said that, you know, your suffering, it only will last a moment. But the favor that you will get, it will last a lifetime. Your weeping will only last for a night. But rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen. If only we will go back. And so this is how God and how the Lord Jesus Christ was ministering to Israel. He said that, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wish that I could gather you like a hand would gather the chicks under my wings. That you don't have to struggle, that you don't have to, to fight against forces that you cannot fight against. Because we are fighting against forces of evil. And so, that's the message of the Lord. So friends, the Lord is gentle. And yet he is firm. So let's avail ourselves of the gentleness of God. Amen. It will go well with us. He knows that we are weak. He knows where we cannot handle it. And he would come to our aid. In Psalm 78, we could see how the Lord led Israel. Psalm 78, verse 52. He said, But he brought his people out like a flock. He led them like a sheep through the desert. He guided them safely so they were unafraid, but the sea engulfed their enemies. See the contrast here? Here comes God's people being led by the Lord himself. He guided them safely so that they were unafraid. They marched boldly even before their enemies. But what happened to the enemies? The sea engulfed their enemies. So friends, let us be with the Lord. Amen. Let's bring comfort to God's people. Let's bring comfort to each one of us, to one another. And just trust in the Lord. See, we cannot handle this ourselves. We need the Lord to gather us under, her wing, under his wings. When the chicks are outside, how can the mother hand protect them? But look at the mother hand, how the mother hand would go every effort to gather the chick under her wings so that the chicks will not be snatched by the eagle. So friends, similar, similar. See, if we expose ourselves, we are not the target of the wicked one because now we are un not under the wings of the Lord. And when the wicked one comes, then we are an easy prey, easy target. There is no defense at all. But if we are under the wings of God, then we are safe and secure under the hands of God. Regardless of your situation, friends, today, you might be struggling in your situation in your life today. Regardless, come under the wings of the Lord. Amen. Choose to be under the wings of the Lord. Choose to be under his protection. Don't try to shield yourself. The reason why that chick was snatched, because that chick chose to be outside of the wings of the Lord. But if we choose to be under, friends, we are safe and secure because God is a mighty God. He is a caring God. He is gentle. He is kind. And yet, he is stern. Amen. And many times, though the, the mother hand would like to save the other one, the mother hand would still protect the others here. So the reach of the mother hand is so limited. And that's what is happening to us. See, God has each one of us in his wings. There are those that choose to be outside, and he would reach them to them. But the problem here is the sin that comes. How can God reach them with the sin that they have? So I say, let us be faithful to the Lord. Amen? So both adults and children, listen to what the Lord is saying to us today. Let us be faithful. God 
is faithful. He said, come to me. You who are weary and are heavily laden, I give you rest. Let's stand up.